Hi everyone, good morning. We're about to start, so I want to first introduce Pietro Veronese, who's the Deputy Dean of UBUV, please. Good morning, everyone. I am Pietro Veronese, one of the Deputy Deans of uh, Chicago Booth. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to the 2023 Antitrust and Competition Conference hosted by the Stiegler Center for the Study of the Economy and the State at the University of Chicago. Welcome. As you may know, the Stiegler Center was founded over 45 years ago as a partnership between the university's economics, uh, Department of Economics and the law school. And uh, one of the hallmarks of the center uh, then and now is uh, a focus on interdisciplinary research and on investigating the connections between uh, economics, uh, uh, politics, regulation, and markets, among others. This conference uh, really helps exemplify that purpose with top scholars from different disciplines and universities around the world, as well as other key policymakers, practitioners, and stakeholders. The importance and timeliness of the topics covered uh, in the Stiegler Center Antitrust Conference series over the years uh, is uh, pretty much clear. It's also especially appropriate for these discussions that uh, take place at the University of Chicago and in this year as we celebrate the 125th anniversary of Chicago Booth. The university and the so-called Chicago School of Economics were among the foundations of reforms in antitrust policies that happened decades ago. The fact that we continue to engage in this discussion showcases our commitment uh, to intense inquiry and open dialogue as well as a commitment to challenging conventional wisdom. I'm sure that uh, all this will play out over these next two days of this conference as you work to explore what a modern US antitrust policy might look like. Finally, I would like to thank the conference organizers from Booth, Filippo Lanceri, Guy Rolnik, uh, and Luigi Zingales. Thank you to all the speakers for participating in this important event. And thank you to all of our attendees, both here and uh, online. We look forward to the many productive conversations that uh, will unfold. And thank you all for being here. Thank you very much, Pietro, for these great welcome remarks. And good morning to everyone in the room and to all of you watching us from elsewhere. <coughs> in my opening remarks last year, I mentioned how during my extremely long 13 years as an antitrust student, from an undergraduate in Brazil to, to today, I had really witnessed firsthand the slow international decay of US antitrust hegemony. It's impressive to see how US antitrust policy went in such a short time from a policy that awed and led the world to a policy that unfortunately carries less and less weight. This is partially because US antitrust policy lost its backbone, which was its ability to adapt to changes in market conditions and in academic scholarship before other countries did, and in doing so, lead the rest of the pack. Indeed, one way to represent this, uh, one way to represent this disconnect can be by looking at the evolution of Supreme Court decisions. For a separate project, I've been identifying and, and looking at the impressive number of 473 decisions the Supreme Court ruled on antitrust matters since the 1890s, since the enactment of the Sherman Act. As you can see from the graph, uh, it's no exagger exaggeration to say that by 2010, we had literally re hit rock bottom. The court had never had a more antagonistic view of antitrust enforcement in its history. And this was despite the work of many people in this room, actually. We know for a while that not all, not all vertical integrations are pro-competitive, that workers can also be injured by anti-competitive behavior. And many are the topics that we could discuss here and, and address that, that are separate from policy. The same graph, though, shows how there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Times are slowly changing. Still, this process is facing and will face remarkable obstacles, and success is far from guaranteed. At the Stigler Center's, sorry, at the end of last year's conference, Luigi stated that while antitrust was in bad shape but alive, the consumer welfare standard was dead. This was his concluding remarks. However, and paraphrasing the great wisdom from HBO series, what is dead may never die, will rise is stronger. No? <laughs> that is to say that the, let's say, moribund US antitrust policy that is still prevailing in the courts and in many policy and other circles will not be truly gone until we can find a proper replacement. 
Any policy needs guiding principles to decide on complex trade-offs, and antitrust is no exception. This is the goal of the Six Stigler Center Annual Antitrust and Competition Conference, which starts now. This is perhaps our boldest conference, because it's a conference about the future, not a conference about the past. It's not an exaggeration, again, sorry, to say that we really brought together the brightest minds from many different generations and from many different countries to discuss this important question, what should guide U.S. antitrust policy moving forward? And over the next two days, this room will host discussions on key topics such as what is the strength of the economic evidence that connects lackluster antitrust enforcement and societal harms? Is there such thing as a unique consumer welfare standard and how do we define it? Is current, US, uh, is current antitrust policy well equipped to tackle challenges around the ownership concentration of media markets, around ecosystems, and about labor markets, among other topics? What ideal standards should guide US antitrust policy? And finally, what is the optimal role of courts in this entire process? Concluding, I believe many people in this room would agree that free markets are the best mechanism to improve people's lives. Yet free markets need sound antitrust policy, and a sound global antitrust policy needs the U.S. pushing us forwards, not backwards. Maybe call me naive, but I strongly believe that good ideas can shape a better world. And it's our joint responsibility as the antitrust community to help lead the way. So yeah, let's get to work. Please. <laughs> All right. <laughs>